strugglers. I'm just uh, off to a celebration today. Got me mates from the uh, local Labour Party, new members. I just crossed over something quite special, which is, I'll show you now, a very important place where I live. There we go. That's where John Prescott threw that punch all those years ago. You see that? Right, here you go, I'll show you the reverse view. There you go. You might recognise that. Spooky, as they meant they used to say. Me now as a elected Labour representative, stepping where John Prescott was eight. <laughs> Put some on his nose. So. See it. Uh, well, I'll do some stills and show it on the, on the uh, channel later. But uh, for now, ciao. Good evening, the strugglers. Uh, just making this short vid. I've returned a few hours ago from our little celebration the uh, theatre I was going to on the way where I showed you the famous plaque where John Prescott infamously punched <laughs> that egg throwing farmer wasn't it? Oh god 20 years ago yeah 20 years ago this year I think um yeah strangely got a little plaque there for your iPhone but uh that made me chuckle uh but uh, yeah it was great and um loads of people turned up uh and it was for it was for all the people that had worked hard to get us a Labour MP back where I live because we've had a Tory MP for two years, and um, so we uh, worked absolutely um, frantically to get our MP back and also to get the Labour uh, the best result possibly nas nationally, which we did of course. So we're all very proud of each other. Um, and ourselves, so uh, it was a celebration. We weren't sure it was going to be a celebration or a commiseration, obviously, during the week. Um, and uh, lots of our friends turned up who'd had similar successes where they were, so uh, it was great. And uh, also been following the news today. Well, it's a Sunday today, so there's not a lot of news coming out, but. Um, we were basically talking about the fact that uh, amongst us that it's important to keep the impetus up. So if you're a, a, a Labour supporter, a Jeremy Corbyn supporter, someone who worked hard as well, sorry, it's a bit dark, so the sun's going down, <laughs> um, uh, like us, uh, and you think it's all over, it's probably not. I think a lot of uh, a lot of money's on the fact that we might have another general election call before the end of the year for one reason or another to do with the DUP and the Tories trying to get things through Parliament and with the arrangement they've got with the DUP which is, sounds very very precarious um, so uh, yeah we're all trying to say that basically keep in the mindset the campaign mindset keep the campaign going the, the sort of uh, you know so we get we can start at a sort of moment's notice again, uh, and if it does happen, let's win it this time. And amazingly, I mean, this is this is what's great is even even the usually very hostile press um, acknowledge that you know, although the Tories have technically technically uh, won more seats than us. Do they look like winners? Do they are they behaving like winners? No. Um, Labour are Jeremy Corbyn is we are. Because for us it was a win. It was a win. In every sense, and it feels like a win. It feels fucking fantastic to be honest. Pardon my French. Um so we'll see. A lot of speculation today about what in effect in reality uh a, a DUP propped up Tory party could or couldn't do. Um, Jeremy Corbyn this morning was talking about um, uh, adding some substantial amendments to whatever's in the Queen's speech by the DUP and the Tories. If it gets to that, uh, it'll be very difficult for them to 
get a lot of things through, so it's very unclear at the moment. I mean, the fact that the DUP can't vote on issues only related to England, um, they will vote in support of the government if there's a vote of no confidence, um, and they will vote on economic matters. Um, such as budgets or, or whatever, but I think we we all think, and I think all the, despite pundits getting it wrong, these so-called experts, I think a lot of political pundits think that the trouble is going to come from the Tory backbenchers, which is a pretty safe bet because that's historically what happens: is the Tory backbenchers turn on their leaders if they consider them to be weak. Um, it's happened for decades. So um, at the minute they're holding off because I think they realise that turning on May and having another um, internal party selection for leader would effectively trigger another general election almost straight away. So I think that's why they're trying to get this sort of Gap as long as they can, hold on as long as they can, as long as they can, under the guise of you know doing it for the country for Brexit because they realize that uh, if it happened anytime soon, they're very likely to be punished by the, by the electorate, you know, you um, for making the you go to the polls again <laughs> so soon. Um, but yeah, again, can't really see how they're going to avoid it to be honest. I can't see how they're going to get much through Parliament. Totally beholden to the DWP, DUP, um, totally beholden now to the far right of their own party, the backbenchers, the uh, 1922 committee, who are not the um, gay marriage loving uh, libertarian sort of Cameron type, um, May type. Uh, conservatives are all sort of supposedly cuddly and friendly, they're the old fashioned right wing types, the uh, hang them and flog them types. So, uh, yeah, that, we, I think that's where it's gonna, it's gonna sort of fall down for uh, Mrs. May, to be honest, with her own party. And of course, all the legality over the, I'm a bit like that, all the legality over. The DUP, the DUP, and Mrs. May and Sinn Fein and uh, the peace process and all of that, uh, that's all up in the air. So very interesting times, and uh, it really does feel like we're living at the beginning of something new politically in this country, not just politically, um, something new socially and physically um, and Thursday was the first shot which seems to have wounded the neoliberal beast that is the modern conservative party in Britain it's been happening all over the world I mean it happened in America last year with Trump winning over Clinton uh, you know very nearly happened in France and in some respects it did. Macron's a centrist, but he's not. You know, if you look at the, what actually happened, the way it happened, um, that was also extremely interesting and not the norm. Uh, so interesting times. Anyway, this is going down. It's not great video quality. Uh, so, more tomorrow. I'll be out and about tomorrow doing my hashtag councillor on the dole, councillory duties. That's a word. Um, hopefully trying to help uh, one of my local residents who's uh, suffered a fire a few months back and is uh, basically have been working on poverty wages and cannot afford to replace uh, the furniture that her children need now for their bedrooms or even the carpet so myself and an, another new councillor colleague uh, try and uh, persuade uh, a local carpet owner to see if he'll uh, be kind enough to park the carpet for this family. But, uh, I'll let you know how that goes tomorrow. So, good night.
and have a good night and have a lovely rest of the Sunday and uh, see you Monday morning Monday morning see you Monday morning bye bye ciao strugglers